So in this video, we're going to be looking at acids, bases, as well as our salts and how we can make them as well. Now, starting off, we know the theory of Bronsted, Lowry, acids and bases from GCSE. But in A-level, we just add the actual phrase Bronsted, Lowry in front of it because that's an example of a theory of acids and bases. Now, in terms of this, an acid is just going to be a proton donor. Now, if I were to draw an actual equation to show the process in which HA, our general acid, is going to donate a proton, we would normally show a reversible reaction arrow which looks like this you've seen this in equilibrium and you end up forming of course h plus and then you also end up forming a minus as well now this is our general equation for an actual acid dissociating itself or ionizing but we prefer the term dissociating at a level and we know an acid can be defined as being a strong acid or a weak acid now a strong acid is a proton donor again but this time it completely dissociates and so we know in terms of equilibrium it lies very far to the actual right hand side so that means our HA has dissociated to form lots of H plus and A minus. Now to emphasize that what we can do is is we can take HA and we can show a general reaction arrow to show that our acid is going to completely dissociate so I end up with all of my H plus and all of my A minus being formed itself. Now, if I were to look at a weak Bronsted Lowry acid, it's a bit different here because we've got a proton donor again. That's how it's similar, but it's how it's different is that it partially dissociates this time. So that means not all of my actual HA turns into H plus and A minus. And so we can emphasize that by drawing a reversible reaction arrow symbol for our weak acids itself. Now, how do I tell the difference between a strong and a weak acid now well, normally a strong acid will have a ph less than one and a weak acid will have a ph greater than one now there's three strong acids that you need to remember one of them is of course hydrochloric acid another one sulfuric acid and the final one is going to be nitric acid in terms of your weak acid though, normally there is a rule and that is when dealing with an organic acid, one that contains carbon or a COOH functional group for a carboxylic acid, we normally define these as being weak acids because of course they're organic and they only partially dissociate. Two of the ones you'll come across in module six is going to be of course benzoic acid and phenol as well. But remember, if it's organic, like ethanoic acid, methanoic acid, propanoic acid, we normally tend to say it's a weak acid. Now, of course, the strength of an acid is proportional to the dissociation of the acid in water. And however much H plus we get, that defines how strong our acid is going to be. So moving on then, if we know that acids are going to be proton donors, what does that make bases? Well, a bronsted Lowry base is going to be a proton acceptor. It's going to be the opposite. And normally bases, right, we normally can tell if something's a base, if it has something like hydroxide in it, where that hydroxide can accept a proton, H+, and what we can actually end up forming is, is water itself. Now, let's say if I were to look at a specific type of a base, because so far you've looked at insoluble bases at GCSE, which don't dissolve in water but then you've looked at soluble bases which do dissolve in water and we actually call these alkalis and we define an alkali as being something that releases OH- ions into solution well let's say if I were to deal with something like sodium hydroxide which is a strong base it's an alkali that you need to know and sodium hydroxide that will dissolve in water it will react with water and what we end up forming is is of course because we've got OH in there that accepts a proton from water just like how we've shown above and we end up forming believe it or not another molecule of water and then if we look at what's formed as well because we've removed a proton from here we're left with OH minus and then of course sodium ions is going to be also left over as well now with this equation we can of course cancel a lot of waters on the left and right hand side and so what we actually are left over with is sodium hydroxide dissociating to give us sodium ions and then hydroxide ions as well so yeah there's our equation to show the dissociation of a base now that's an example of a base that we need to be aware of that's quite strong like let's say potassium hydroxide lithium hydroxide sodium hydroxide and so on but then what about our weak bases our weak alkali in this case 
the one that we need to remember for the exam is going to be ammonia itself now ammonia what that can do is is that can accept a proton and that can do that from water as well where i end up with ammonia reacts with water and what we can actually end up forming is is ammonium ions which you've come across before in the atomic structure topic and then of course we end up forming oh minus itself and you can see here how ammonia acts as a base it accepts a proton from water to actually form ammonium ions and then hydroxide ions as well so there's another example there now what about a salt then well let's say if we were to take in most cases right an acid and a base but in other cases where it's not neutralization we could still end up with a salt well a salt is going to be when the h plus in an acid is replaced by a metal ion or an ammonium ion and let's look at an example let's say if i were to take something like sodium hydroxide and then if i were to take something like hcl well they would react together and what would happen is is this h would be replaced by this sodium so i end up forming sodium chloride and then i also end up forming water as well another example is let's say me dealing with something like ammonia and then let's go with a diprotic base something like h2so4 we end up forming of course a salt which in this case we've got two lots of h plus so42 minus we just need to use some drop and swap so i've got so42 minus here i've got nh4 plus here so what i end up with for my formula i would end up with two lots of ammonium ions and then i'd end up with sulfate there's our salt and you can see the h plus has again been replaced by our metal or our ammonium ion as well so moving on then, if we were to look at polybasic acids, we know that different acids can release different numbers of protons and we can use the term polybasic or polyprotic and in this case, to look at monobasic or monoprotic acids, we need to know the definition that one mole of an acid releases one mole of protons. For dibasic, one mole of acid releases two moles of protons and so on. Now looking at that, we can write an equation for this where we've got HCl that dissolves to give us of course h plus and then cl minus very nice and straightforward and we need to know that in terms of dibasic and tribasic acids that this happens as well we can write it overall where we form two lots of h plus but in this case right we need to know that it happens one at a time the dissociation happens one proton at a time so if i look at that i actually end up with h2so4 dissociating to give me h plus and then we also end up with with HSO4 minus so I've lost one proton that's why the charges are different compared to what we normally expect it to be and then that HSO4 minus is going to dissociate again and we end up with a H plus and then this time SO4 2 minus itself now of course we could just combine that together where we say that H2SO4 the overall process is that we actually donate two protons and we're left with sulfate 2 minus as well but of course you need to know it happens in stages same thing with phosphoric acid where we could end up with H3PO4 another acid that we need to be aware of this dissociates and we end up with H2PO4 and then that's going to be minus plus H plus happens again we end up with h2po4 minus that's dissociating to give us hpo42 minus and then another proton and then the final step where we've got h and then it's going to be po4 this time 2 minus that's going to dissociate to give us po4 3 minus and then another lot of proton and of course we could simplify this again where we end up with h3po4 that dissociates to give us and then it's going to be po4 three minus and then three lots of h plus as well so we've looked at polybasic acids then and some definitions that we need to remember but what about our reactions of acids to make our actual salts itself well in all of these cases we're dealing with neutralization reactions apart from the first one which is actually going to be a redox reaction which is what we need to remember now of course we can take an acid we can react it with a metal and we end up forming our salt but we also form hydrogen gas itself the observations we see because we go from solid to aqueous is going to be of course our solid dissolves and because a gas is evolved of course you've come across the word effervescence but i prefer the word fizzing is another observation we can make if i were to take an acid react it with a metal oxide in this case you can see i've got hcl reacting with calcium oxide yes i form a salt but this time i actually form water and the only thing that we can see here
here because we've got an insoluble base going from a solid to aqueous when it forms a salt is a solid dissolves what about with an acid reacting with a metal hydroxide we make salt plus water nitric acid over here reacting with sodium hydroxide we just form our aqueous salt and then we form water itself there's no visible change over here if I were to look at an acid and a metal carbonate, well, we've got a salt, water, and then carbon dioxide being produced. Now, the carbonate itself could actually be aqueous, and that depends upon what you're actually using, whether it's going to be a solution or whether it's going to be an actual physical solid itself, like calcium carbonate chips. Now, of course, if it's a solid, the solid will dissolve. If it's aqueous, you wouldn't see anything happening in terms of a solid dissolving because there's no solid there in the first place. But then, of course, because you've got a carbonate that forms carbon dioxide that's what results in the fizzing so yeah i've got a task for you to do now i want you to write a balanced equation in a level chemistry every equation that you write must be balanced and i want you to do that for the following reactions here so pause the video have a go and then resume once you're ready to check over some answers so looking at the first one then we've got h2so4 now the bit that we need to remember is that we're reacting an acid with a metal. So what's our product going to be? It's going to be salt plus hydrogen gas. Now how do I actually find the salt? Well, I need to remember what a salt is. It's when the H plus of an acid is replaced by a metal ion. So I know I've got sodium, which is a metal. It's in group one. It's sodium plus. Sulfate, which is SO42 minus. That's the actual negative ion that we're dealing with. That's what we're left over after we get rid of the two positive hydrogen ions and then we need to swap and drop it so i end up with of course sodium two lots and then sulfate itself so now we need to balance it do the hydrogens balance yes they do do the sodiums no they don't i put a two over here and so there's the first one done looking at the next one we've got hcl reacting with a metal oxide sodium oxide again what do we form well in this case we form a salt but then we also form water now if i look at this i've got hco so i've got a chloride salt sodium ions and so i know i end up with sodium ions chloride ions it's just going to be sodium chloride because they're balancing charges on their own does that balance in terms of itself no it doesn't i need a two in front of here to get the sodiums to balance and then i've got two hydrogens on the right one on the left i need two lots of hcl over here as well and there's that one done what about nitric acid and calcium hydroxide well an acid and a metal hydroxide forms a salt and then water again so in this case i'm going to end up with of course hno3 nitric acid that contains a nitrate ion and then that reacts with calcium hydroxide which of course calcium we know it's going to be two plus because it's in group two and what we end up forming is is of course because we've got calcium two plus nitrate one minus i've got calcium and then nitrate remember to put the nitrate in brackets i end up with that and then water as well now does this balance no it doesn't i've got two nitrate ions here so i need to put two nitric acids there to give me two nitrate ions on the left and then i've got two hydroxides over here i've got two h's over there they react together to give me two lots of water itself so now that balances that one's done what about the last one phosphoric acid over here reacting with a metal carbonate which is calcium carbonate we actually end up with of course three products this time because we've got a metal carbonate and an acid one of the products is of course the salt so i've got calcium which is going to be two plus and then i've also got phosphate po43 minus and so i drop and swap it so this three comes to calcium so i've got three lots of calcium and then two lots of phosphate because it's a molecular ion i'm going to put it in some brackets i also end up forming some water and then i form some carbon dioxide as well now in terms of this i need to balance first of all my salt i've got three calciums there so i need three calciums over here i've got two phosphates there so i need two phosphoric acids over here now if i look at it carbon dioxide if i've got three lots of carbon here that means i must have three lots of carbon dioxide there now what about the oxygens apart from what's in our salt well i've got three times two lots of oxygen here so that's six all together there and then i've got one over here I can only change the water now but of course if i were to look at the left hand side we have of course three times three lots of oxygen that's going to be nine overall now of course hydrogen as well two times six 
2 times 3, that gives me 6 hydrogens. So in that case, I know the only thing I can do is put a 3 in front of this water. And that leaves me with now, of course, 3 lots of oxygen, not 1. And it also gives me 6 lots of hydrogen to match it with this over here. And so there is my balance equation for that one as well.